everybody. Mm, yeah, you can tell I was just doing the picture. That's fine. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. Today, we're welcoming you back to another book review. Today, we're going to be talking about the two books that I received from Simon and Schuster under the Saga Press publication that they have, which is a sub publication um, or a smaller publication within their publication group. Um, Saga is wonderful. I love their covers. I think they're beautiful. I think they're really interesting ideas and great, like, kind of, they were really, these two books were really wonderful for me as somebody who's not usually into, it's interesting, I'm talking a lot about fantasy here and magical realism, weird. Um, it's very different from what I usually read and I felt like I talked about these briefly but they kind of got skimmed over. Um, one of them I know really hasn't been talked about much on booktube but one of them I've seen several people in the booktube... I'm talking too fast so I'm yawning. Okay. <laughs> one of them I've seen a lot of the people in the booktube community um, ask about and not to me but just in general they've been like oh I'm curious about this. So I figured I'd talk about them more. Um, Simon and Schuster were really, really wonderful to send these to me. I am hoping very much to be able to work with them again. I really enjoyed the, um, <laughs> the privilege I got. Yep, that is the right word, Acacia. I enjoyed the privilege of being able to work with such a, um, a larger, and being able to work with a larger publishing company. I have a couple publishing companies that I work with. The ones I work with the closest are much smaller for the most part. And I would love to get to work with others as well in a larger scale. And Simon & Schuster seems to be a great company. So that's a thumbs up for them. Um, now let's move on for the uh, books. The books. Let's start with the one that's really not talked about as much. And that would be this. This is the Starlet Wood new fairy tales and this is by a slew of different authors now one of them is Catherine M. Valenti the other one is Garth Nix those are the two that I saw and I was like yes I need these in my life so or I need this book in my life I think there's a new fairy tale collection that's coming out or has already been come out this this month that I'm also very excited to get my hands on but this one is the one that I found first um, before it was published and I was very happy to to have that experience um it has little tiny doodles in the corner of each page based around the stories and the chapters and based around everything um it's very well done it's really pretty I don't think it was the final draft I believe this was an arc um which is absolutely fine yes it says non-merch so this is an arc um so when do you come out beautiful I know you're not for resale I've got that October 2016 so this is coming out this month this was far more traditional. This was a very much so more traditional fairy tale collection than I have seen in a long time. This was much more dark. It was more warped and dismorphed and it was more it was more true to a grim story to me. I personally really enjoyed where are you? Um Am I? Oh, <laughs> okay. So the Briar Rose, the Briar and the Rose, by Marjorie M. Liu, which I plan to actually look into that author and see if I can find more. And that one is based on Briar Rose, Sleeping Beauty, which I'm sure you know. And I love Sleeping Beauty anyway, so I think that is probably helpful. And then the other one I really loved was what are you? Reflected by Katherine Howard, um, which is based on the Snow Queen, and Spinning Silver, which is based on Rumpelstiltskin. And they actually tell each of the little underneath. So they have a retelling of Thumbelina. They have a retelling of Da Trang and the Pearl, which I think they actually have several that are not just like the Grim Fairy Tales. I think they go a little bit further than that. So the Snow Queen, Rumpelstiltskin, Thumbelina. Let's see. Little Red, 
um, East of the Sun, West of the Moon, Hansel and Gretel, The Mouse and the Bird and the Sausage, The Wolves, The Glass Mountain and the Black Bull of the Narrow Way, The Girl with No Hands, The Little March Girl, The Pied Piper and Hamlin, The Voice of Death, Jack and the Beanstalk, Sleeping Beauty, and The Shadow. I really like the retelling of The Snow Queen, Rumpelstiltskin, Sleeping Beauty, and The Girl with No Hands. Those are the ones I really enjoyed. One of the one of the sleeping girl, the girl with no hands, was by Catherine M. Valenti, who I very much enjoy. She wrote um, the Fairyland series. She wrote many other books like Deathless and all that. I've enjoyed her writing. I've seen her speak. I really respect her. She's actually a Mainer, which I think is fantastic. But um, I haven't had a chance to read all of her works, and I hope to eventually. Anyway. This was a really great fantasy in terms of somebody who really enjoys the original Grimm's, who really enjoys that darker Grimm, that darker fairy tale, that darker feeling, that feeling that you're lost in a world where you can learn something and kind of feel, feel uneased, feel weird and kind of haunted. I really enjoyed this for that. I think it was a great adaptation of fairy tales. I think it was absolutely stunning. And I think that for somebody who likes fairy tales, this is a really interesting collection and a great addition to your collection. That's that one. And then there's this. This is Kate Howard. Did... Can we just pause for a second? Because just, just, just hold a second. Yeah, reflected by Kate Howard, the Snow Queen. So, <laughs> good job, Acacia. Connect the dots. Kate Howard, Kate Howard. Good job, connecting dots. Um, Kate Howard apparently likes fairy tales. This is Roses and Rot. This is a story, and it is the story of two girls. One is a dancer, one is a writer, and the two of them end up going, they're sisters, and they end up going to a commune of artists, basically, to try and work with their, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Their mentors work with the people that they really value and try and hone their craft to this perfection. One sister is going there to write her book, to make her name for herself, to become famous that way. The other one is a ballerina, and as a ballerina, she is of an age where she should be staying in a company and working on just her technique and trying to focus on getting bigger roles and continuing to stay with one company, but she has taken a year off to go work at this commune, which is unheard of and usually destroys the ballerina's chances of being bigger in the company and actually having a place. This book is a lot about family dynamic. It has a wicked mother. It has uh, sisterhood and love. It has conquering of fairies and evil. There's an element to this where you have to decide whether or not you believe what they're seeing. It's either the darkness of it is either you thinking you understand or their exhaustion. There's kind of a mix between the two. I think it was really well executed in that it's almost a story of madness but you don't know if it's madness or magic um everything about this was really really pretty and it is and I say pretty because it's well written the cover is gorgeous but it also just takes a twist on the modern day gothic fairy tale feel and then it turns it on its head into this artsy artistic world that you just don't usually hear about which is the the artist that's not starving the artist that is able to afford to go to this kind of camp if you will um this group of different art people all being around but they're all trying to fight for this grant basically to be able to do what they want it was really really interesting i thought it was completely brilliant the story I couldn't say that the writing was absolutely beyond anything else but just like her short story in here I found it captivating and moving and heartfelt and I've fallen in love with it now more that I've kind of let it sit on my shelf than I did initially when I first jumped into it I loved it 110% five stars and then I finished it and I wasn't really sure but since I've finished it I've continued thinking about it and that's what makes me know that I really enjoy this book it's haunting memorizing and charming I think it's beautiful if you haven't picked this up yet pick it up it's a great fall read those are my two books from simon and schuster i will link 
below and I will see you in my next video tomorrow for more reviews.